Hello everyone, I'm Chester44, also known as Fly, and welcome to this Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity. Last episode we went and turned in a whole bunch more quests, and now I think there's only one quest left for us to turn in. And that is, uh, Verzano. This is gonna be something to deal with that won't be that fun, but we'll see what we can do. Let's head in right now. Pretty sure we're going to end up having to choose a side here. And I think the Domenals won't really be very happy. Mr. Verzano. How do you do? Were you able to deliver the package? Yes, but now the Domenals want you dead. The Domenals were there? Verzano's eyes fly open and he tugs at his beard. I was so careful, always following the Vera Vita. I, they couldn't have known. Uh-oh. Well, well. Is this your last day among the living, Verzano? Verzano wrings his hands. Uh, your timing is impeccable, Telepalagina. The Domenos are after me. Please, you've got to stop them. As if any of this were ever in my hands. The Republic's considered your business worth protecting based on its success. That success depended on cooperation with the locals. Like House Dominel, you've lost that. And the favor of the Dukes. We'll not interrupt. Even if you get out of this alive, they are done with you. The Dukes have more pressing interest in Defiance Bay than rescuing one merchant who threw himself overboard. Verzano falls to his knees and clasps his hands together. Have mercy, Palagina! I don't stand a chance against the Domenos. I, I brought failure and shame on myself, but you can't mean to watch your countryman die like a dog. Vezzano, Vezzano. Why are you wasting your precious breath on me? My orders come through the ambassador, and through the ambassador from people you should be honored ever gave a moment's thought to whether you live or die. You don't seem like the sort to petition the gods to keep him out of hell. So why not cry mercy to the one person in this room with the power to grant it? She turns her attention to you and raises her feathered eyebrows expectantly. I intend to protect Verzano from the Domenals. Palagina drops her gaze and lightly shakes her head from side to side. Moments later, she turns her eyes to the ceiling in amused disbelief. <laughs> Verzano. You have a saint looking out for you, after all. She strides across the room and takes the already nervous Verzano's head in her feathered hands, a gesture that seems to hover in a dangerously narrow space between caressing and crushing. Just don't come knocking on the embassy door. Understand? Verzano replies with a rapid, weak series of nods. Palagina nods back once and gives his face a light slap. Do as you will. He's no longer my concern. Well, that's interesting. And here they are. Dana saunters through the door, flanked by a squad of Domenal foot soldiers. She lets her gloved hand rest on the hilt of her weapon. A sneer curdles on her face as she looks at you. It seems I was wrong to overlook your blunder. Rest assured I never make the same mistake twice. All right, begin the fighting. But there are a lot of guards here, so you're not going to last very long. Almost. And down they all go. He wipes the sheen from his forehead and looks around the warehouse with the wide, fearful eyes of a hunted animal. I can't thank you enough, Tamika, but this won't stop the Domenos for long. I've got to get out of here, and I recommend that you do too. He gives you a bag of coin with shaking hands. That's all I have after this ill-fate adventure. Thank you again, and please look out for yourself. Forgiveness? Ooh, an embossed grimoire. You might get something good out of that. Uh, looks like the rest is just general loot. Forgiveness. A unique pistol. Q 
Keel was a constable in the small deer wooden village of Maiden Falls. A good man who fulfilled his duties honorably, he often found himself in violent confrontations with passing ruffians and mercenaries come to the village to exploit the nearby ruins. Wiry with a boy boyish face and an awkward gait, offenders rarely took Keel seriously. They would mock him, telling him there was no way he was going to take them to jail. You're right, Keel would reply. I bring forgiveness. Cue the shot. Cue the pistol. <laughs> oh, nice. All right. Oh wait. Oh, that's just Donna. Okay. Well, mission accomplished. Pretty sure House Domental really doesn't like me much. Not now. Ugh. And it looks like Palagina is right outside here. Ah. It's done then. Vezzano plays with fire and someone else always pays the price for it. Your charity is more than he deserves. Still, at least I don't have to deal with him anymore. For that I'm grateful. Whether you intended to or not, you've done the Valian Republics a service today, ridding us of him. I work closely with the Embassy to protect our interests, but lately I think our gaze has been too narrow. You clearly have pursuits of your own in the city, but I think we could help each other out. If you're interested in doing some work for us. Officially, I mean. We can go together and I'll introduce you to the Ambassador. Yeah, that sounds fine. Let's go. Good. Maybe I can finally do something more worthwhile than playing nanny to merchants. The embassy is up in First Files, southwest of the Ducal Palace. Once a character has been dismissed from the party, they will re return to either the Blackhound Inn in Gilded Vale or to your stronghold if you have acquired it. We can only have six, and we now have Palagina, a level seven paladin. Hmm. You know what? For now, dismiss a dear. Hey, see you when I see you. Let's take Palagina in and see how she does in Edair's place for a bit. So, let's see. We have Palagina, a 7th level paladin. Freyrmas mes conquistolias. Whatever that means. An avian godlike. Interesting. All right, and she has weapon focus soldier for greatsword, pike, warhammer, arbalist, and arquebus. As for what she wields, she has a fine greatsword, fine pistol, and Palagina's breastplate. Breastplates are popular for offering a modest amount of protection without the restrictive uh, movement of heavier male and full suits of plate armor. Due to their widespread use by warriors from the Valian Republics, the fashion of clothing and peddling worn under breastplates typically reflect, reflects Valian styles. This one, belonging to the paladin Palagina, bears the stylized engraving of five suns, representing the Valian Republics, and more specifically, the Brotherhood of the Five Suns. It's fine in quality and defiant. 50% armor reduction armor damage reduction when under 25% health. Interesting. Uh, no, not crafting. Uh, gear. I think we have... We do! We have a great sword that is actually unique. Justice. This would actually be a good choice for her. I mean, for God's sake, it's called Justice and she's a paladin. And we've also got this pistol. Which is unique, so... Let's give her the sword and the pistol. I think that works. Uh, we can also give her a cloak. Don't need stealth and perception. Uh, we'll give her the amulet of health and the minor cloak of protection. That seems to be fair. Oh no, it's only one, right. Uh, amulet of health. Oh yeah, and we picked this up, so you can go ahead and learn Bewildering Spectacle. Thank you, Aloth. Okay. So. New companion. Let's, uh, let's bring her over and then we'll... Yeah, let's bring her over to, uh, to where she's supposed to go. 
and we'll speak with her afterwards. How about that? So the first place we go is Brackenbury. Oh yes, and uh, what are your abilities? Let's see, you have Second Wind, Flames of Devotion, uh, Second Wind, okay, Flames of Devotion, calls upon the Paladin's inner fire, causing their equipped weapons to burst into flame and adding burn damage to their next attacks. Lay on hands, fueled solely by belief, the Paladin is able to heal with the touch of his or her hands, recovering a substantial amount of endurance for the Paladin or an ally within range. Sworn Enemy marks an enemy as the focus of the Paladin's righteous fury, granting accuracy and, bonus da and damage bonuses against the target until combat ends or it goes down. Field Triage heals an ally. Zealous Focus, the Paladin's intense and pure conviction instills clarity of purpose in him or her and all allies. Increasing their accuracy and converting a portion of grazes to hits. Cannot be active with other zealous auras. Hmm. Okay. Uh, wait, no. No, it's not Brackenbury, it's First Fires. My mistake. Two First Fires, then. Alright, and now to the Valian Embassy. By the way, are we... I need to switch her out and check up there. I mean, we're a hero here, so we might have gotten enough uh, respect. When the dust settles. Oh, hold on a do moment. What you feel is best. I understand. The one thing sure. I hate about the conversations that they automatically start is that they happen while while I'm away and I don't hear them. Great. So now I lost that conversation. <sighs> That's the one thing I hate about that. I don't know they're doing it because I'm too busy moving on to the next place. Grr. Okay, let's speak to this person Ambassador here. Ambassador Agosti, I would speak with you on a matter of some urgency and great importance. Sighing as though remembering some heavy burden, Vincent crosses his arms before replying. Paladina, if this is the same matter we previously discussed, I doubt it I will be convinced any more easily. Ambassador, please hear her out. The Ambassador appraises you for several moments and nods respectfully. You are well known in defiance, Bay Laniara, even in the Valian Embassy. So, you're keeping respectable company these days. Hardly a good reason to go stirring up trouble with Animancers and who knows else. Ambassador, there are issues at stake here that go beyond rogue merchants and a port staying open. Animancy is under attack in defiance, Bay. Palagina shakes her feathered fist to emphasize her point. We have to protect our interests here, but that also means knowing when to avoid unnecessary entanglements. The Animancers and the locals have problems. They'll work them out, or they won't. Either way, there's too much to risk by getting involved. If it is outlawed here, what would prevent the same from happening in our republics? The ambassador's face vacillates between expressions of sympathy and frustrations. Palagina, I do not think your concerns are unfounded, but it is not the place of this embassy to rep countermand the Republic's policies. Hmm. If it makes any difference, Ambassador, I am already looking into the matters Palagina has spoken of. It doesn't, but it would be fortuitous if your investigation took you to Twin Elms, because that's where Palagina needs to go. What is it the Dukes need of me, Ambassador? The Deerwood's instability has created an opportunity for us to take over their trade with Eir Glanfath. We will need to meet with the Glanfath and soon to secure the upcoming trade agreements. The roads to Twin Elms can be dangerous, of course, but that's why you'll be our representative there. Pelagina's feathers ruffle, but she speaks with an unusually meek timber. It costs the ambassador. But won't this provoke the Deerwoodens? Their country is falling apart, and we're already dividing up their trade alliances. Provoke them into what? Going to war? Through no fault of the Republic's, the Deerwood's armies have been deprived of an entire generation of soldiers. It would be foolish not to take advantage of the situation. If we don't, the Riyad Serens will. Hmm. Ambassador, that's some cold compassion considering what these people have been through. More than that, Ambassador, there is a practical element to consider. We may profit in the short term from this arrangement, but what of the future? 
The deer wood won't forget, and the republics may pay the price for it. <sighs> we are not the dukes, Palagina. It's their decision and our job to carry out the orders. It's not like they're asking you to assassinate someone. Palagina raises an eyebrow and clenches her jaw, but remains silent. <clears throat> Palagina, Palagina. Go to Twin Elms. Speak to the... Uh Anamenthoth, impress upon her the instability of the Deerwood, and reassure her of the Valian Republic's desire to open safe trade. After a long and uncomfortable pause, Palagina exhales deeply, the lids of her eyes closing briefly as she slumps in acceptance. Of course, Ambassador. The Ambassador nods and smiles paternally. He then looks to you. I know you planned on investigating this crisis together, but I hope you understand Palagina's responsibilities. Hmm. I understand, but we're still going to investigate it, responsibilities or not. Will the Dukes need to hear more about Palagina Messere's wild adventures? Of course not, Ambassador. I will attend to the Amen Anamenfath as soon as I am able to travel to Twin Elms. Good. Now if you will excuse me. Could have gone better. Could have gone worse. I appreciate that you stood up for me, but it's hard to persuade the Ambassador to go against the Duke's orders. I know you're right, Palagina. We may find a way for you to fulfill your obligations while looking into what's really going on around here. Don't worry. Enough wisdom for both of us. Now I just need to find out how to get the Twin Elms before the Ambassador loses his patience. Still, I fear that making this deal with the Glanfathans will further weaken the Deerwood and make trouble for the Republics in the years to come. Well, it's a long way to Twin Elms. You'll have plenty of time to think it over. Verus. All right. Well, how about we speak I'm with her? Ready. Need something? All right. Let us speak, Palagina. We must learn. I was wondering about your order, the Brotherhood of the Five Sons. Back in the Republics, we call it the Fremas Miscanxuolias. The Five Sons are the Dukes Belts, the great Dukes who ruled over the most powerful Republics. Spirento, Ansens, Celona, Ozia, and the Revua. The Dukes Bells keep the Republics moving forward, keep us at the forefront of trade and technology, keep us strong against our rivals. We brothers are sworn to aid and protect them for the good of the Republics and their citizens. You say brothers, but... But my breastplate bulge is in the wrong spot. <laughs> I may look like a woman and sound like a woman, but according to the Republic's laws, I'm not. What they call godlike, people like me. We can never bear children, so we can't be real women. For what that's worth. Most women in the republics, if they can't bear children, it's like the sun has set on their lives. But what it was worth to me. Freedom. The Brotherhood has a prohibition against the women entering, but I was allowed. Many resented the decision, but I learned long ago not to care. That's definitely a way to look at it. How does that work? With five dukes, they can't agree all the time. She throws her head back and laughs. <laughs> of course not. They argue endlessly in the Songreta Ducala. The Brotherhood is forbidden to take sides in their debates. Not that I'd want to. I'd rather risk life and limb fighting the Republic's enemies than listen to the droning lectures of the Ducal Congress. Our loyalty is not to individual dukes, but to the dukes as a whole. To their collective will and the resolutions. We follow the mandates of the Ducal Congress. The individual dukes direct us, but they have an understanding of how we are not to be used. All right. What's so great about the Valian Republics? Long ago, the Grand Empire of Valia thrived. As the Empire collapsed into the warring states of Old Valia, much of that old culture was lost. The Old Valians see grandeur in their acts of their forebears and believe it elevates them. They are retired people from a fading time. There was once beauty in the great cities of the Empire, but there are few alive today who ever saw it. The Valian Republics are a rebirth of the Grand Valian culture, but we are more than just that. While Old Valia was content to, ever, to look ever backward, the Republics will shape the future. When did you become a brother? I joined the Order when I was very young, only six. I did not pass my final examinations until I was twenty. It's not something I ever expected to happen. Pirates attacked the town where my family lived. It was not uncommon when I was young. 
They were more of a nuisance than a real threat, but they were persistent enough that the Duke of Ozia saw fit to send the fre Fremas to deal with the threat. I was enamored with the idea of being one of them. I didn't even know it had meant to serve a country then. I didn't really even know what the Republics were. I was just a little girl. But maybe I wanted to be them because I saw how people celebrated them. I saw how people thanked them for what they did. Most of all, I saw how they felt. Left this place that felt like a prison to me. So how did you wind up joining? Oh, my father resented me in my presence. When he learned that the Brotherhood accepted my kind because we are not considered women, he asked if I could be traded in exchange for taxes he owed on his land. The recruiter believed that having a godlike among the ranks would be prestigious, so he accepted in spite of my physical limitations. Why did your father resent you? Because I was born different, but more than that because the birth hurt my mother. It left her unable to bear more children. It's why my father traded me to the Brotherhood. My mother, she was a different sort. Kinder, more forgiving. She did not blame me for being what I was, but when my father looked at me he saw my, his family line ended. He hated me for it. That's strange. Our lives are strange. There are other ways my father could have dealt with me. He could have killed me at birth. No one in that village would have thought less of him. She shrugs, the membranes of her eyes sliding out and back from beneath her eyelids. Being sold to the Brotherhood turned out to be the better alternative. Alright, let's talk about something else. You're one of the godlike, aren't you? <laughs> That's what they call me, yes. I've never met a god, so I don't know what they're like. Can't say why everyone else presumes to understand why I was born this way. How do people in the Valian Republics feel about the godlike? Like with every, anyone who's different, most people are curious or afraid. And if they're afraid, they get angry. They want to make sense of the world, and people like me can be confusing. And believe me, people are easily confused. Her tone becomes more serious as her voice and gaze drift off. After a long moment, she looks back to you. We all have to protect ourselves no matter where we are. Being different means always looking over your shoulder, no matter what company you keep. Where are the, when the Valian Republics are you from? I was born in a fishing village near Biajep. Her brow furrows, her golden eyes looking away as she searches for a lost memory. I can't remember the name. She waves her feathered hand dismissively. I was only there for a few years. My best memory was leaving the place. Like all the other brothers, I grew up under the Ozean ba Bastions. It wasn't easy, but I preferred it to gutting fish. Why are you concerned about animancy in Defiance Bay? People look at the Republics as a nation of traders. We do engage in much commercial trade through Defiance Bay, but the greatest value we have found is not written on a ledger line. It's intellectual wealth, the ideas that we exchange. The Deerwood and the Valian Republics are the world's leaders in animancy. If the Deerwood Institute's prohibitions against research and practice of animancy, it will have serious repercussions for the Valian Republics. Do you see animancy as just something to be traded? <laughs> I'm not a scientist, but I believe animancy can benefit us all. There are so many questions to be answered about who we are, why I am the way I am. If we can answer them, maybe we can make life better for everyone. Don't you think there are dangers in animancy? Of course it's dangerous, but we who live in the Eastern Reach, we are the children of pioneers. We sought out the danger. That is why all of the best research must happen in the new world. <laughs> I see. I'd like to know your opinion on something. Ask and you will know. How do you think things are going? Well, I'm glad you'll know how much can be gained from diplomacy. In the Brotherhood, we are trained to keep our physical strength in reserve and use wits and words to navigate our way through most conflicts. She raises a feathered finger to emphasize her point. There will always be a time for a war, but I'm glad to see you have the restraint not to succumb to the desire every time the opportunity arises. You spent a lot of time in the Deerwood. What do you make of it? It's not the Republics, but the Deerwood is one of our closest allies. We trade more with the Deerwood than any other nation, and we have no greater ally in supporting animancy research. Uh, still, I do not understand the Deerwood in obsession with revenge and feuds, nor the widespread hatred of Orleans. The Orleans from Mayor Glanfath fight for their homes and their culture, as anyone would. They fight dirty, but I would too if all my enemies were twice my size. Do the, 
do the republics view the Adir Empire as a threat? We used to view the Empire as a threat. Since the revolution in Deerwood, the republics have benefited from the shield that the Deerwood provides. It's another reason why I fear the fall of the Defiance Bay. If the Deerwood is weak, Adir will surely test the republic's dominance in the Eastern Reach. What do you know of Rawatai? They've done impressive things with cannon and artillery, and some of their ship designs are interesting, but they shout too loudly over minor accomplishments. No one seriously questions that the Republics control all sea lanes in the Eastern Reach. Farewell, then. A Forgotten Hollow added. Another quest. Hmm. Well, I must be at the Stronghold to recruit or dismiss party members. Unfortunate. Well, we've taken care of Pelagina here. Interesting as you are, I don't think we'll be keeping you with us right now. Your quest is over in the east. No problem. Far over in an area which we can't get to now. Your own father sold you to the Brotherhood? He hated me anyway. I was glad to be gone. The Dukes are my parents now. The Republics, my children. That's an interesting way of looking at it. Arguably, yes. All right, so... You know what? Ah, uh, it's a long trip. You know what? I can spare the time. Let's take the trip to Cadnua for a moment. Oh! There's a messenger at Cadnua. Looks a little healthier than before. A messenger from Defiance Bay has arrived at Cadnua. Okay, we're definitely going to speak with them. I also want to take a look at the barracks, which I think are, uh, in the main keep. And we should have the various guards and such around here, somewhere. Alright, let's head in. Let's see. Ah, the Valian Shock Mage. Everything seems to be in order. And this leads to the barracks. Let's take a quick look in. I'm curious about the barracks. I want to see how it looks. See. Three greasy playing cards are hidden under the coverlet. Huh. A sketch of a young elven woman with large eyes and a small fine nose is tucked under the pillow. Okay, fair enough. I will eventually hire more. But I feel like we'll be able to afford others at some other point, but for now. Let's see. I bear a message from the Ducal Palace. Pardon the intrusion, milady. Chancellor Warren urgently requests that you meet him at the Charred Barrel in Brackenbury. Is it about Cadnu again? I don't know. My apologies, milady. I am merely a messenger. Why isn't the Chancellor meeting me at the palace? Perhaps the Chancellor is meeting with you in an unofficial capacity. It happens from time to time. I'll meet with the Chancellor when I can. The messenger bows and leaves. Brackenbury. Okay. Interesting and slightly concerning. That's going to be finished in 12 hours, which is good. The Bailey will look good. And we'll be able to get other upgrades soon, too. That said... Gores. Palagina out, Adair back in. And now that we have a spare person... Hmm... That one's about to expire. Let's try what the well holds. We get a swaddling sheet and copper. Oh. Okay, she's assigned. It'll take one turn. Oh no, yeah, there we go. Three turns remaining and then we'll get her. Okay, that's fine. Uh, should I... I think we'll we'll be fine with just four for now. All right. With that, you know what? I'm going to end this episode here. Next episode, we'll head back to Defiance Bay. We'll see what uh, Warren has to speak with us about. We'll see if we can actually get the information for Adair now, which mm. we may be able to. Looks a little healthier than before. And honestly, while we could help the dozens, I kind of want to help the knights. So I should try and see what happens if we can duck out of the quest for the dozens and see what the quest for the knights are. It's kind of a tough choice. 
Then again, we do also have the quest over in Heritage Hill that we need to deal with. Wooden planes. Yep, that's that's something we need to get to. Anyway, that'll all be in the next episode. So until then, I am Chester44, also known as Falai. That is Laniara, Adair, Dorance, Aloth, Kana, and Sigani. This has been a Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity, and I shall see you all next time.